Kayla and Jim and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. For this week we have another exciting thing and that is we are going to talk about Hurricane Wilma back in 2005. Hurricane Wilma, another case study for you. And we have some pretty cool statistics. We've also got some graphics that Kayla is going to pop up throughout our talk, as well as some videos of the hurricane doing all of its destruction. But before we get started, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss another Meteorology Monday. We were looking at our statistics the other day and it looks like 80% of you guys who watch our videos are not subscribed. So what are you doing? Press the subscribe <laughs> button. It's a great time here. It's lovely. Case studies, meteorologist reacts, all of those. Check it out. How can you not subscribe? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so first of all, what we're going to do is we got to set this up. So, where did it form? Where did it form? And uh, when, did, it when did it form? Where are all the winds, where's, when, how's, where's, why's? How's, who's, what's? Now, what Wilma. What starts with W? Wilma's? You're right. I mean, we're a W storm. So, 2005, uh, for those that don't know, was a very, very, very active year. We went well into the Greek alphabet, but, you know, Wilma being obviously toward the latter part of the alphabet, very destructive hurricane, a very strong, powerful hurricane for later in the year. Yeah, it was very late in the year. So, Hurricane Wilma formed October 15th, 2005. It became a tropical storm on the 17th, quickly, rapidly intensified into this monster category five. And then it made landfall in Mexico on the 21st, and then again made landfall in Florida on the 21st. Fourth, right. and then it did a little bit more of its, you know, hurricaney things, and it went up north, and it <laughs> died around the 27th. So I mean, a good chunk of time, and very late in the year. Yeah, exactly. So it formed well south. Mm -hmm. So even though it was mid-October in the northern hemisphere, it was still down where the water was very warm. Yep. Uh, the sun angle was still, you know, decent, so that you know you still had a lot of heat coming in, solar radiation. Everything just came together to form the depression, and then into the storm, and into yep. a hurricane very rapidly. Yes. So let's get into some statistics then. Let's get into some statistics. So speaking of rapid intensification, this thing went from a tropical storm to a category five hurricane in less than 24 hours, which is a record. I think it went from like 60 miles per hour to the last recorded thing was 175 miles per hour. But it was probably even higher than that because with how quickly it was strengthening, the Hurricane Hunter planes couldn't get in there fast enough while it was still yeah. like strengthening. So they were estimating that it may have reached up to 195 miles per hour. Of course, that's not official because like the official strongest is 190. But 85, 195, somewhere in there, possible. Uh, the official is the 75 though. That's right. And another statistic that goes along with that is the lowest pressure drop. Yeah. In a short amount of time, yep. which is the winds respond to that. So this yep. pressure drop was the catalyst for the winds to increase. But uh, it was that same 24-hour period yep. that it actually holds the record for the most amount of pressure drop in a 24-hour period, and that was 97 millibars. It could have been up to 100 millibars again because we didn't get the readings yep. at the time as the plane was in and out. Again, it was 2005, so it was many, many years ago, and we didn't have the technology that we do now. But yeah, it went from, I forget, somewhere in the 900s down to 882. Actually, it was 884 is what they recorded, but then they had to extrapolate a little bit more because of the distance to the actual center and, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So they extrapolated to 882. And there's even some non-official reports. Non-official, but still. Down to 878 millibars. Monster. Even even just the 882, it went from I think from 982 to 882 roughly in a 24 hour period. So roughly 100 millibars, which explains the going from tropical storm to tropical cat storm five, to yeah. a cat five hurricane. <laughs> it's just amazing how a pressure drop that rapidly, how yeah. quickly the wind field responds to that. The atmosphere yeah. is responding to this low pressure drop and just whips up those winds. Again, it was over the Western Caribbean, yep. east of Mexico, east of the Yucatan. So it was out over water. It had plenty of- Plenty of all the right ingredients you know, just sitting there waiting for it. Warm water, it had, everything was going for it to just 
intensify rapidly. And uh, I just want to throw one thing in there, a little behind the scenes meteorology thing here. So your pressure and your wind speeds are directly related. So when you have a very low pressure, your winds want to kind of balance out the high and low pressures. So it, it, it speeds up the winds depending on how low the pressure is to try to even it out as quickly as possible. So when you have a pressure drop that intense and that quickly, the winds just they go from zero to a hundred like like that it's absolutely insane so that's what happened with Wilma. the atmosphere's got to balance all that out yep that's the the one job of the atmosphere balance everything out whether <laughs> it's one winds job. tornadoes hurricanes <laughs> lightning the atmosphere wants to be balanced so there's a little meteorology tidbit for you okay so now we've got pressure we've got wind this thing is intensified. It's a Cat 5 now in the Western Caribbean. Uh, another record was eye wall diameter. It was 2.3 miles across at its most intense, which I mean that is like an insanely small eye for a hurricane. That just goes to show you how intense this thing was. That the winds are whipping around so quickly that the eye is so small. Set a record as the smallest eye ever recorded on a hurricane. That's right. Typically the average diameter of a hurricane's eye could be 10 to 20 miles, maybe 30 miles across, yeah. depending on its structure and how strong it is and how far it expands out. I mean, we've had like the El Reno tornado. That was 2.6 miles wide. If we're talking in the, uh, you know, 180 range, you know, you're looking at almost a EF5 tornado that is covers a basically not, what it is yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not not the whole western caribbean because <laughs> those strong winds don't expand, expand out that far but but closer to the eye yeah. you've got that large large circulation yeah very strong very strong winds there's another statistic as well and yes. that has to do with the W storm. The name itself. So as you know, W is pretty far into the English alphabet. And in order for us to get there in the, the hurricane season, I believe it's number 19 on the list. I didn't do my math with the letters real quick. I think it's number 19. Anyways, before 2005, the last W named storm was in 1950, making Wilma the first W named storm or the first 19th storm in 55 years. Wow. And it would also be the last W named storm until last year in 2020. So that's a 15 year gap again. So it just goes to show you how rare it is to have A, hurricanes that late in the season, but B, I mean, to have a Cat 5 W named <laughs> storm, absolutely yeah. insane. Yeah, absolutely. And also, it be the strongest hurricane on record in the Atlantic Ocean Basin in October with a W name. All right, so now we're in the Western Caribbean. We have ourselves a category five hurricane. It is bearing down on Mexico, but it did not hit as a category five. It, it actually not. wound up weakening before hitting. Yep, and it ended up hitting Cosmo, Mexico as a category four on the 21st. So it's making landfall in Cozumel. Mm -hmm. Another very important statistic here is rainfall. Insane amount of rainfall happened. There was a report of 64.33 inches of rain in a 24 hour period, which is over five feet of rain <laughs> in 24 hours. There'd be nothing left. Absolutely incredible. So that's five feet, four inches, 0.33 inches of, that'd be taller than me. It would be exactly right above my it's head. 0.33 higher. 0.33 <laughs> higher than my, that's a lot of rain. That's a lot of rain in wow. 24 hours. So just to kind of do a comparison, when you have a, a strong thunderstorm or a severe thunderstorm that comes over you mm -hmm. and drops a bunch of rain, let's say it parks itself over you for an hour in an hour's time frame it could probably drop an inch an inch and a half maybe two inches depending we're not talking about super soaker gully washers here we're talking about your average severe thunderstorm that uh, rolls over you so that's a lot of rain but eventually it either you know weakens or it moves on and right. you recover right but this is 64 inches of rain in 24 hours so if you do the math you know that's 24 48 
three inches. 72. So right. you're talking two and a half inches of rain an hour constantly. I mean, but that's just the 24 hour total. It's not like it started and it stopped. It was raining before, it was raining after. So after it left Cozumel, it kept on trucking north and then it turned east and it headed into Cape Romano, Florida. And by this point it had weakened, but then it gained strength again. So it dropped down to a cat one. By the time it made landfall again, it was a category three hurricane. Caused a lot more damage in Florida than it did anywhere else, with the US total being 23 deaths and $21 billion in damages, accounting for today's dollars, not back then dollars. And in total, the hurricane caused 52 deaths and $38.4 billion in damages. So most of that was US related. It's uh, incredible that you had such a strong category four hurricane hit Cozumel and you'd expect it also hit islands be... down in the Caribbean as well you'd expect kind of all of that when it was stronger to be deadlier and costlier and stuff but it actually did more damage and deaths in the US interesting and if you watched another video that we previously did called the top 21 hurricanes you'll see that Wilma made our list and you'll see some of these statistics in that video as well so it is gonna pop up in the corner up here check it out when you're done with this one now we tried taking a look to see if we could find some videos of Hurricane Wilma hitting you know some of the islands in Mexico mm -hmm. but we couldn't really find a whole lot so we actually found a bunch more based in Florida and yep. so we decided well we'll grab some of those and we're gonna go ahead and display them for you now. Here we go. So there you have it, a case study of Hurricane Wilma from 2005. Again, if you like what you saw, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. If you want to check out more of our weather adventures, hit us up on Facebook and Instagram, as well as our website, which is linked down below. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And may our next W name storm not be a Cat 5. No, you're blocking where I was going to put <laughs> My face gets covered. <laughs> <And> literally. <laughs>